So welcome back to another episode, and this will be part two of the discussion or interview with Demarcus Lafleur, and we are picking up where he is telling us about the rigors of being a videographer, and also talking about the relationships that he made uh, while at Jackson State and how he leveraged those relationships to take his career to new heights. Intriguing story. If you have not listened to the first episode, go back to episode 114 and listen to that episode and hope you continue to support this podcast go to the website uh, subscribe follow us on social media so we can continue to give you content that i hope will be meaningful for your daily lives enjoy this episode hey you might not even remember this but this was kind of that first weekend in miami right so we go Mm -hmm. to the game the team boards the flight leaves i come back to the hotel because i have my family with me and we go to this restaurant and then you come in with a crew. I don't even know what crew it was. I was a production crew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So I'm sitting the table next to you. I'm the fly on the wall. And mm-hmm. I'm listening to you present your story. And you're telling about how you've been shooting these rap videos and how you've been doing different things and the prices you're charging. Mm-hmm. And they're like, man, look, nah, 10x yeah. that. You know, yeah. everything you say and they're like, nah, you're worth way more than that. Your value is way more than you're charging this, that and the third. And I didn't really know what I was witnessing at this time. But I was like, wow, this is the birth of something. And, you know, mm-hmm. to be able to just see it continue to grow over time, you know, because one of the thing is we know, you know, value is different in each market. Right. And the price that you can charge doesn't determine your value as you quickly saw. You know, right. you're around Coach Prime for a few hours and he's like, hold on, who is this guy? The Rock right. walks past you. And he's like, hold on, he's special. You know, mm-hmm. the guy's looking over your shoulder they're like he's special. But, you know, sometimes we don't see that until somebody else comes in and says, no, you're different. Right. So kind of talk about that. You know, that was a really powerful moment for me. I was sitting there with my family and we we're, you know, we we're talking, but we could hear the conversation right next door. Yeah, that, that day kind of bring me chills because it did kind of like, I'm sorry for kind of going in my thoughts. Nah, but that nah, was really. that was almost the day that kind of birthed me understanding my real worth in the film industry because I'm literally being told that from camera operator who's worked on practically everything you watch, like, from commercials to Oscars to clips that are used for NBA 2K. Just, he, he's literally one of the duns when it comes to be calling up somebody to do film work. And when I was sitting there listening to him telling me that, he was like, we got to get you out of Jackson. Like, we got to do this, that, and the third. And I'm asking myself, like, you care about, you know, you care about me that much? Like, it's crazy. So... I was telling them, yes, of course, music videos was the bread and butter. And that'll always be something that'll be near and dear to my heart because I did that for seven years. And a lot of people grew closer to me with shooting music videos. Um, And a lot of people grew to know me from shooting music videos. And I was just explaining to them why it was so close to me. But they were also explaining to me that I can also get closer to what I really want to attain, regardless mm-hmm. of how close I was to music videos. They were telling me like, bro, we've been, I, one guy was a producer, the other guy, like I said, was a camera operator. And they're both, you know, Emmy nominated, everything like that. And they were like, you're not gonna honestly get there until you, you know, kind of let music videos kind of take the back seat. And at first, like I said, you know, I was kind of a little, I was like, hold on now, y'all know this how you know this how I pay my bills. Like, yeah, you know, (laughs) not not just to say y'all don't know me, but it's to say y'all don't even understand the factors that go into everything about being from Jason, about shooting rap videos are more prevalent than any other music video in the city. So, as a businessman, I have to know how to control my own market. I have to know how to control my own right. flow, cash flow, and things like that. So, of course, this may not be something that I feel like illustrates who I want to be as a filmmaker, but it's also it's also showing how creative I can be with what I'm given 
in the sense of the music industry in Jackson. Whether it's still growing or whatever it may be, doesn't get that much attention, whatever it is, I'm still showing that I had some type of creativity within it. Um, so yeah, I was a little, I was a little triggered at first. I was like, <laughs> well, what I'm gonna do, you know, cause right. y'all don't live in Jackson. Right. Like that's, yeah. that's how I really used to tell them. Like, I was like, well, it sounds good, but like, I still, you know, I'm there. Mm -hmm. So it took me a minute to think on it. And, you know, like I said, I started to kind of fall back on it and work more with the documentary documentary crew because I was still getting that same conversation from the director of the crew too because he's also from a small town in uh, Georgia and he understands how hard it is you know to make that big change and to be put in this situation and things like that so continue to work I'm not gonna lie I was still shooting music videos during the season I shot my last music video probably after Southern Game or the like Texas Southern, like right before the Texas Southern game or something like that, getting closer towards the end of the season. And it was starting to make sense because it wasn't making sense, you know, right. with, with the whole music video thing and just thinking about my son, just watching what I'm doing with what I'm recording and things like that. So, and like I said, he played, a, my son plays the most major role in everything because whether it is, uh, sports, whether it is music video, whatever it is, I want him to understand that your work portrays who you are. Yeah. Regardless if it's film, regardless if it's being a doctor, regardless of whatever it is, you can work as as a sanitation worker, but you can be one of the best. I just want him to understand it to be your best you. So I had to look at myself and think, what did I really want want to show him as he's now gaining more sense, you know, become he's two years old, he's catching on to literally everything right. he's a sponge. that's being put. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't say anything. Like so that that started to actually take an effect on me with music videos as well. And that conversation, man, it literally opened my eyes as to how much I was short, not giving myself in the sense of how long I've been in this film game just like seven years prior to me meeting all of them I would have thought what I was doing would have had me I was a Spike Lee I was a Spike Lee or Jackson you know like yeah <laughs> but once they actually put it in, in perspective for me and let me understand how much more feminine it is out there and how much how much more you could do I was like all right let's get it let me let me see if I can go ahead and let this go so I let it go completely and more opportunities started to come yeah like now you're on the pickleball course right you know i was <laughs> like i was like whoa so i let it go like two or three games before the season and mind you it's about to be the end of coach prime we had the all corn game or what was the last home game so it's all corn and then jack uh southern playing in the swag championship game that's what it was. So that was the last home game. And these are our kind of our final semi goodbyes from the production crew uh, before we come back in like, um, what was it, almost two weeks for the mm -hmm. Celebration Bowl. So mm -hmm. in my head, I was kind of like, all right, what I'm going to do now, even though every, I got one more game to look forward to. And the director of the production crew, he kind of saw it on my face like, all right, I see you a little nervous. You don't know what comes <laughs> next. After a project, you know, um, he sat me down. He was like, man, you got to understand. You put your best foot forward. You was better than we ever thought you would be. And you got my word. Like, we got stuff coming up. And yeah. I'm from Jackson, and I'm so used to hearing that. So I'm saying, yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm right. like, Empty you, know, promises. <laughs> you know, I'm used to it. So I'm like, man, I, I appreciate it. But in the back of my head, I'm like, all right, bro. Trying to get back to these music videos. And now you got to get this, you gotta get this money rolling back now. Not back, but you know, you gotta you gotta yeah, think, you. think forward. Yeah. yeah, you gotta think think forward. So the thing that kind of settled me in that day, because yeah, I was definitely feeling like I ain't got number one more game, this little this this little high horse of you being coach prime, you know, mm -hmm. cameraman, you know, that whole the whole emotions of everything we told us. Everybody going that. through it. <laughs> Everybody was going through emotions that day. So 
And of course, you know, you're thinking like, oh, am I going? Am I not? But at the same mm-hmm. time, I was like, it's, I ain't gonna, I was being real myself. I was like, too cold, too cold. I ain't gonna lie. And then I got that <laughs> my son. I think about my son and everything like that. So it would have been a lot. It would have been a little too much for me, not yeah. gonna lie. But um, yeah, so he sat me down. He was talking to me. And this how I kind of I kind of knew everybody took a liking to me because when people sit you down and like have heart to hearts with you, that's when they really like care about you and stuff. Right. Like, so he was like explaining to me everything was gonna be cool. He got a lot of different things coming up and he's gonna be looking out for me. And he pulls out his phone and this is before anything dropped, and he shows me the trailer for Coach Prime documentary and it had most of my B roll shots more than anybody. <laughs> he was like and he was like, Well, why are you smiling? Like he asked me before it before I said anything, he's like, Why are you smiling? I was like, Man, I saw my shots, you know what I'm saying? He was like, Yeah. He was like, All right, they let you know you're gonna be, you know. You somebody, you, you good, you something. And I ain't, man. That conversation and the conversation in Miami were two conversations that literally changed my outlook on everything that I was doing and how good I was and how far I can really go, you know, in the yeah. film industry, being that I haven't even been to one film school. Like, mind you, I I, I tell anybody this, like, I, of course I went to GSU and I was a mass comm major. Um, but I also withdrew from JSU in my sophomore year because I wanted to see if I could really do it. Like, I moved to Atlanta, just bought my car, you know, just dream chasing and everything. Yeah. Well, before that, and this is early filming out it, before I withdrew from JSU, um, I was Mass Comms. Uh, and now the, the now acting president of JSU was my, you know, professor. And, you know, I got a chance to speak. The fundraiser donation drive that they had a couple of days ago and I was just telling her like it's kind of a full circle moment for me to be sitting here filming this and -hmm. you to be the president and I was just sitting in your class you know as a mass comm major not knowing if this was going to really work out for me and it's just I don't know man me I'm not I'm not a person that really be in my feelings or emotions but sometimes it hits you like yeah that's what I said man anybody else bro yeah, I told you. I was like, I gotta share your story, man. Yeah, it's, it's, got- it's crazy. <laughs> you making me think about it, like from that conversation and me not even knowing you, and of course me being Mississippi. I don't even know if I spoke when I came outside. I may have spoke to y'all over there somewhere, just right. being country, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and it was like once you got up, you you know you heard what I was saying, and I'm not the person to even think that nobody, you know paying attention to me act, right. acting foolish even though I'm joking I'm telling my story you know and you know for you to I don't know that was crazy to me because well, yeah when you did say that and walked off I was like dang like crazy <laughs> you know like somebody yeah. really that, that stuff that happened on movies you know what I'm saying no, you're, right. Like, you're right that's why I say sometimes my life be I don't, I don't be able to it's process movie, it like, bro, this, yeah it's like this yeah. type of stuff that happened in the movie bro so mm-hmm. Those conversations happened, and now we're going into um, Celebration Bowl to where the emotions are really, really, really high, you know, within everyone. And for me, myself, I'm like, all right, it's, you know, last game of the season, so you really got to be on your A game when it comes to recording, whatever it is that you need. Like, I'm, I'm mentally prepping myself to go mm-hmm. in there and just dominate the, you know, it's your championship sure they, game. <laughs> yeah, when they look at my clips, they're going to be like, oh, DeMarcus, you weren't playing, you know, while yeah. we was doing our thing. So game goes on, you know, do the run out. I'm in front of coach. And it was kind of crazy for me because normally when I when I do the run out, I'm running backwards and I got the camera in my hand. And he, you know, Coach Brown running towards mm-hmm. me, I'm running backwards and everything smooth. But this game, a walkie talkie fell off my hip. So now I'm trying to <laughs> – I'm trying to run yeah. up the walk and talk and the cows like, ah, this is gonna be a crazy game. <laughs> Already. But no, nah, it was smooth. It was smooth. I was literally, I was, I was good mentally and I was good emotionally. And of course the game ended how it did. And yeah. they kind of rekindled those emotions that I had in the beginning of the game because now I'm really like, all right, you know, what's gonna go? What's gonna what's gonna happen, right. you know? And yeah. And it was it was definitely kind of a head scratching moment for a minute, but then, like I said, things just shot off again. Like yeah. before pickleball, 
me see. Did I do anything before pickleball? I don't believe so because pickleball started up the next month right after. Like I, I was literally done filming Coach Prime and started pickleball almost a month. And yeah, almost a month later. So pickleball started around January 20th or the 12th or something like that. And but in between that time of the last, because that was what the 15th of December or something, we were down in mm-hmm. Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that so second weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was almost a month. So not gonna lie, within that month, I went through a, a variety of emotions because. Mind you, you got to think, what if I do get the call? What am I right. going to do with my son? What am I going to do? Just down there, it's like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, I got them emotions, and then I got the emotions of, well, you can't be upset if you don't go, because, mind you, you only been in this six months, and he's going to have people <laughs> that's around him for 20-plus right. years. All right. His circle so, is, it continues to move, right? right? Yeah, you have to be real with yourself that you know. I had to tell like I'm. I mean, there's me. Period. I, I'm telling myself, don't nobody owe me nothing. You know. Right. I got myself. I worked my way into that situation to you know be in a position that I was. So if that was the way that it was supposed to be, then that was the way it was supposed to be. The only thing now is I have to continue to build off what I what I have now and where I'm at. So and that's you know. That was my mo, and mm-hmm. I got the call, and they was like, "We probably we know you probably don't know what pickleball is, and we probably know you <laughs> don't care what pickleball is, right? But we want to know, do you want to be a part of this project?" Yeah. I said, "Man, y'all family, like I'm telling the production crew, I'm like, right. y'all family, like y'all took me in, knowing that I didn't know nothing about nothing. I y'all didn't even know if I was a good film, but y'all took a chance on me, so y'all think I ain't gonna take a chance, you know." Right, which I also, of course, yeah. and now one second, yeah, and now I love pickleball, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now I love pickleball. Well, come so. on, you're gonna have a pickleball court in your backyard, oh, soon. <laughs> man. So they don't even know, man. They, they are allowed, they are allowing me to experience new things in life yeah. that I probably would have never even thought to even reach out to do within my own life. So when they called me and said pickleball, of course, yeah, I was like, what? A who ball? Right. And I yeah. had to Google it and I saw it Man, like, oh, tennis. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but yeah. once you actually get to watch the sport and you see it in its own essence, you're like, man, pickleball is about to take over. And man, and the, now you're a pickleball videographer specialist, right? Oh, the- <laughs> man, they love me. They love We are at the tournaments, man. I'm literally doing the halftime shows with all the people in the crowd, doing the wobble, <laughs> dancing with them. I don't I don't want a chair and everything. Like, Come so on, these man. are the these are the vibes that the production crew love, you know, yeah. and yeah. that they like to keep around. And, you know, that just grew on them. So now when it's time for the main camera operators to call uh, who they want their assistant camera to be and they like of course we want the markets you know and it's like for yeah. me i'm like bro that's crazy like for them yeah. to even say that to me and explain it to me like i was like man that i don't mean i just gotta keep building off of it now that's yeah. how i look at it like i ain't gonna say i'm a person that's never satisfied but i also understand that any point in time it could have been anybody else in my position or my position could have been taken away from me Sure. Because I'm not going to act like I haven't made mistakes that it could have cost me working on a Coach Prime situation right. where it may be not keeping up with memory cards. And that's something huge because as an assistant camera or a camera operator, you lose your media, you lose your memory card, you lose everything you done shot for the day, you know? Uh, so it's yeah. like those were some of the type of mistakes to where I really appreciate them because they could have let me go. And in time, and instead, it was just, all right, this is the only time you can make that mistake. Mm-hmm. Like, it mm-hmm. ain't even a second chance. Like, right. it's the only time you can make that mistake, whether it's not it's not knowing that you wasn't pressing record, and you didn't press record, and you thought you was recording. Like, mm-hmm. I had that I had that situation <laughs> too many times during Coach Prime documentary. And it was like, well, I ain't going to say too many. I had it twice. But yeah. two is too many. So, all right. 
Um, because he don't cut anybody any slack, right? <laughs> oh, not at all. And this is not him. This is him not yeah. even knowing. This is right. the director knowing. Yeah. yeah. And if Coach Prime were to ask about, well, what about this day, this, that, and the third, then he would have to come back to he can't just say, well, my camera operated, and it's going right. to go back on the yeah. director. So, sure. you know, you get fired for things and stuff like that. But, um, like I said, I, I grew so close to them simply because they treated me like family. You know, they, they looked out for me, whether it be anything I haven't learned or haven't owned or just a pair of clothing, or whatever it was we needed to be on set. Like, they understood that I come from a different environment, a different place. Yeah. So, guiding me there and not just saying it was handouts, but guide, guiding me there was something that was put on their hearts to do along with film and coach prime documentary. And man, I can, I can't thank them enough because yeah. they could have said, ah, it's all right. We don't want a local camera guy. We're going to bring somebody down with us. Yep. And, and that turned into them seeing the, the type of eye I got behind the camera. And now, we out shooting pickleball documentaries <laughs> and they telling me, all right, now it's time for you to actually start to become to get trained up as a real DP. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, y'all really taking me, y'all really taking me to new heights for real. That's so it. no, for it's, real. like I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm in a very, very, very unique situation that I have to be so grateful of to a lot of different people because a lot of people go to film school to learn what I'm learning and, you know, to have the hands-on that I'm doing to work with the caliber of the equipment that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to really be in the industry for a while to even make those connections with those type of people to get those calls. And I didn't slid my little Jackson butt on into a situation <laughs> that, <laughs> right, right. that, that right. a lot of people from L.A., New York, Miami, yep. wherever it may be, work. 10, 10 years old before and it's like once you understand that man it makes you work 10 times harder because yeah. you're you know first yeah you're appreciative and you also know how much th there is still to learn mm -hmm. because you 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 don't want to show any type of weakness in anything sports right. your job whatever it may be you don't want to show those weaknesses so I do a lot of questioning now to the DP since we have that relationship. So it doesn't feel like I'm bothering them now because right. they, they tell me to reach out or call mm -hmm. them when I have a question or they'll send me equipment that they don't, you know, necessarily use anymore. And now I have industry, industry like equipment that I can use for documentaries that I'm doing around the city or projects that I'm doing for JSU and things like that. Now I can bring those type of vibes, you know, to where it all started for me. Yeah. And no, that's, that's my that's my that's my whole goal this year, um, is to hopefully find um a common ground with the um athletics department. We're in great standards with each other. If you're enjoying this episode, don't wait to the end to share it. Share it now. Share this with a friend or a colleague that you think might find value in this information. And then also Make sure that you click and leave us a five-star review and give us feedback because we really value your feedback and your input. Now back to the episode. Um, and just trying to figure out ways of trying to do what was done. Um, and, you know, put the guard, the yard spin on it. Um, the stamp, I don't mean spin, the guard right. the yard stamp on it. Right. And I want to do it in a documentary style, but I also want to implement other sports as well. Football right. gets a lot of attention. Sure. Um, but I also, I also want to grab the stories of volleyball players, soccer players, tennis players who come from different countries you right. know, yeah, have to 100%. deal with different, you know, different things throughout their time as being a college student. So uh, those are just some of the things I've had, you know, kind of just thinking about, kind of just mentioning it, mentioning that to them. Uh, but, yeah, it has been kind of a lot of traveling for me to sit down and have that conversation. So right. hopefully I can get it done before the season starts because I don't want to be mid-season trying to plan, you know, Right. And catching up on, on footage and everything. So, yeah, that's just where everything is kind of led to. But kind of backtracking just a tad going into the pickleball um, production. 
uh, well, not to say be able to say too much, but uh, yeah, they called me to do it, and the first tournament was in Mesa, Phoenix, and mm-hmm. I've never been there. And that was like yeah. that was the moment where I said, "All right, look at where you at now, and look Old at world. you know where it all started." And everybody that was kind of giving you your dabs, the pats on your back, and that whole imposter syndrome you was having, you could break it now because. You really doing it. You really, you really traveling, and you really working with a production crew. Everybody love you, bro. And you, the only thing you gotta do is thank God and keep grinding. Everybody know I put yeah. that on my story, and it, it's not me bragging or boasting. It's literally me saying I was just in the middle of freelance shooting a club video. I was just in the middle of the worst part of Jackson shooting a rap video. Or I was just sitting. I was just the last person in the president class that stood up and said, I want to be uh, a music video director or video uh, director. And everybody turned around in the class and looked at me like, <laughs> you might be in the wrong class because we do news journalism here. You know right. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so maybe see it being at the best. Right? <laughs> to go along, I promise. And to go along with that, during that part of that semester, I was able to do the video for the basketball team when they used to do the Midnight Madness. I saw that. I, w- I was able to do that, and they aired it on WLBT first. And then that Saturday at the game, Jack State football game, home game, they aired it on the Jumbotron. And I literally stood up and looked at the crowd. Like, the whole classroom looked at me <laughs> and was like, that's my work, you know? So it's funny, because I just watched that video right before, you know, in the downtown, right before we came on. I was right. wondering what you were screaming at at the at the uh, jumbo trying. Yeah, that makes man, <laughs> it was man, it was a moment of y'all don't understand how it feel like everybody like literally told me that ain't the word that that might not be the route you need to take yeah. with the camera, you know. And like I said, after that, it kind of took off at Jackson State. Um, I was doing a lot of fraternity uh, videos. I was doing homecoming step show videos. I was a part of the media team for the Sonic Boom. I was also a part of the Sonic Boom. I played uh, the drum line in 2013. This is actually uh, my reunion year this year. So it's going to be a big, that's, you know, I got to be, I I got to be home for the season this year, man. Like, of course, if there are other opportunities of filming that pop up, I mean, you know, I have to weigh out my options. But with this being my reunion year, my class year, it's like, man, I feel like this season, of course, Coach Prime had a, a huge season for the city. But for me personally, to already have had a filming effect on my city, like I'm, I got a chance to put some of my, my classmates from Monkey Bars in, yeah. in the documentary and like they get to come up to me and say you know hey y'all my dog yeah. put me in a documentary yeah. you know and it's like <laughs> that's crazy but it's like now this year I, I really look to take it to a whole new level with the with the level of content and then it's like with, with Austin ASAP visual was already there man two-headed the monster. y'all don't understand that would be a two-headed monster because yeah. his creativity is already off the charts and like yeah. I said, he started me a new line of creativity with sending me all the different college videos, USC, Mississippi State, whoever it was, for me to see how they were doing their camp videos and, and game videos. So I always, you know, give him give, give him those flowers. Yeah, yeah, I always give him those flowers. And anytime he calls to work, you know, whether it be for JSU, whether it be a project he has personally or the seven on seven football team, mm-hmm. it's like, of course, you know, because you looked out for me in the sense of me not even knowing how to compose my videos with, yeah. you know, sports. So now that I've gotten hip to it and I added my Feminati vibe to sports videos and him already being in it. I know for sure if we, if we us together, it is yeah. you. No, it's gonna oh be special. Gosh, JSU man, people, gonna... everybody think JSU about to go in into a uh, ways silently. It's whole new. No, era. and that's the thing because of course we got used to something for three years. It's gonna take another year and a half of people to understand what's going on now. So, I mean, even still, that he's head of um, the media department, like that—that's fine with me. I 
because that's a lot. That's a lot of workload. That's the stage. Right. He got a workload. <laughs> I want to be there to help the creativity flow. I want to be able to do the the same level of the same type of content I was doing, which is live content, which is um, you could say really say as soon as it happened content. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and be able to still kind of mesh the vibe of what the people were already used to and what he's bringing in now because we have conversations and we come to a compromise as to what per se the the masses are looking for because he doesn't have to change anything he's doing he's doing exactly what needs to be done when it comes to covering the team giving them the new look that they need and also creating a new culture with the film uh side with the football team um, but there's also that, you know, elephant in the room of people being used to what they're used to. Right. Um, and that's kind of where my side of opinion comes in as to what I saw go on or how I saw things being filmed. And you don't have to do it exactly this. Maybe if you format what you're doing in a sense, you know, just in this way. Mm-hmm. And, and I see that yeah. start to happen now. People are starting to gravitate to what's going on now because – you can't deny that his videos not, you know, not. Uh, not he is not. special. Yeah. I yeah. remember seeing it a couple of videos. I think he had released one like the Alabama State Week. And I'm mm-hmm. like, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. It's not getting a lot of traction, but his videos mm-hmm. are different and they're special. And, you know? and that's the thing. I really honestly wish that he was a part of the traction when, you know, Coach Z, because that would have been another part that the team really, really, really needed because I wasn't able to do what he's doing because I was mm-hmm. doing a documentary. Right. So the team was missing that aspect of hype videos when it came to recapping the game or just mm-hmm. putting a different element in the team's mind when it's time for game time and things like that. So, yeah, even the mic'd up situations, what he do now, like that's oh, yeah, genius no, that's because yeah. <laughs> JSU, JSU fans want to hear what the – players are talking about whether it's game time pre-game mm-hmm. or at practice they want to hear how they you know how yeah. they out there on the field so like i said man he has a lot a lot of great ideas and i know they're going to just play out well and like i said with me doing with me having my style and him having his style and both of our styles not stepping on each other's toes right. we know it's going to be because we we i mean we bros we we met each yeah. other way before any of this like we did a birthday party probably two years ago and didn't even know each other yeah and we crazy. followed each other on instagram and he like i said he he just was following me throughout the years for like a year or two and then he saw me do the first little jsu video he reached out and he was like hey i got some videos i want you to see and then the relationship just started to grow from there and now we on the phone every other day, you know, talking about <laughs> yeah. three different three different things we film, whether it's JSU or wedding or seven on seven football. Like we had a relationship now to where it's a creator, it's a brother relationship, and we both sit on the phone every day and be like, "Bro, <laughs> if, if, if once we can get something situated yeah. with the, with the um with the film side." It just you is going, man, it's going to be major because my thing is I want to not only lighten the workload for him, but like I said, I want to be able to bring those extra different aspects of film to um, to the team, whether it be me doing some sort of episodes for the team, not, not so much to whether it's not a documentary, but since they now have a um, YouTube channel, it mm-hmm. could be guard the yard, you know, practice episode one of guard the yard game day. We could have, right. you know, just just different things to where I'm literally in a documentary sense taking down everything that's happening. Austin is still doing everything that he's doing. And you still also have the side of students uh, that are part of the media team that are doing the filming, the game game tapes and things like that, you know. So um, uh, we're just operation for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, also with other sports as well. So that's just that on that. And like I said, man, everything has been moving. And like I said, it seems like I'm traveling almost <laughs> every week. I got pickleball, seven on seven football, also working on a Jackson Water Crisis documentary. 
Uh, we just kind of got started up on it. The rolling and Fork. The Rolling Fork, yeah, man. That's that's one that's near and dear to me right now because um, it's near and dear to me simply because I have I've never done a documentary on my own. And I'm literally using everything that I'm learning from Pickleball and Coach Prime and go and taking it to the crew that I'm working with, with Jacksonia Media, Bigger Picture Productions, I'm sorry. And they're literally letting me spearhead it because, like I said, I'm working on yeah. two big documentaries and they're like, man, you know what you're doing. And it's like, for me, it's like, <laughs> man, I'm still in class. Like, right. yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. like and it, it's, it's just a crazy situation to be in when you come back home and people put it that amount of responsibility in your hands you know and it's yeah. like i get to tell the jackson water crisis documentary from my point of view i get to let let the people know who who are the players the playmakers and helping us get things back situated um and also the rolling fork documentary is one that i hold near and dear to my heart because there has yet to be a a full-on story about what happened in Rolling Fork from the actual citizens' point of view. I literally watched the whole hour, hour and five minutes, you know, kind of like with that lump in my throat because I'm I'm remembering that I'm sitting in front of these people who lost everything. I'm kind of like here right now in my life, you know, and I'm sitting probably like in the middle of a field or something talking with trees just down, everything, yeah. houses down, everything. I'm just looking at somebody who is just bawling, you know, bawling in front of me about losing everything. A lady that saved her and her employees who hid in the fridge and the fridge was the only thing that was standing there when the restaurant was completely destroyed. Like yeah. I'm looking at real, real stories. And I'm thinking about mine. I'm, I'm like, I'm listening to them and I'm thinking about man, you, you think your story is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's just crazy. So the, the, the rolling fork is, 90 probably 95 percent done there's it's still in post-production with some sound design things going on and uh color but yeah man that project was it was major to me simply just seeing it from start to beginning i mean from yeah. start to end start and to on yeah, yeah and, and me being a person that was you know relatively over everything whether it's keeping the other camera the other camera personnel sound and i also edited it I also edited yeah. the whole entire thing. So that was my first time sitting down and editing like an hour long. Man. <laughs> I tell yeah. you, that takes that takes some real deal timing and planning and you have to understand how to add sound design and know how to just tell the story how it should be told. And with the Rolling Fork documentary, like I said, it's so touching simply because I'm telling the story from the citizens of Rolling Fork and not just from news outlets. Like right. I'm letting them sit up and tell you how life was for them as the tornado ran through their city, how life was before the tornado and how life is now in present day. Yeah. When people are now still on living their life, we moved on, we sent our water, but there is literally a, there's literally an entire community that is trees. Still trying to put it's, it together. Yeah. It's trash. It's just a. It's nothing but bricks, trash, trees. A couple of homes up on a couple of neighborhood streets, but for the most part, it looked like a landfill. Right. No. Like it looked like a landfill, and it's crazy to see cars flipped over on top of cars. So. And I'm telling them, like, I just came from Deion Sanders, so did all of this mm. that I'm seeing is so surreal to me right now. Right. And to be filming this and to be seeing how people are, like, just stacked up in motels and the food, the, the lady that lost the restaurant, she giving away free food out of two food trucks instead of selling the food wow. to rebuild her, her yeah. restaurant. She's giving away the food for free. And it's like, how are all y'all so happy and so go lucky right now when y'all don't have resilient. anything? Yeah. And I feel like, and that's what she was saying. She was like, the city of Roller Fork is resilient. That was the exact word she said. And that documentary, if not anything else that I worked on, is probably going to be something that I hold close to my heart because 
the first option where I've never been before. I've never experienced anything that hor- horrific other than Katrina. Right. Um, and it, I mean, Katrina was bad, but it didn't wipe houses out. It didn't everything wipe tree. Yeah. You know, it didn't wipe everything out. So it was like, how do I tell this story as perfect as possible? And, you know, I was like, we got to get it from the people. So yeah, it, 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 should, it should be coming out. And, and, and the thing is, I want it to come out around my birthday, which is in November. And it's just we in, we in talks right now with a lot of different outlets as to how we're going to put it out. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking about trying to, you know, reach out through Mississippi Public Broadcasting as well and try to, you know, get it put out their way too because I actually – and I want the people to roll in for it that have moved to not so – I don't want it to trigger them, but I, I kind of want them to see that somebody cares to tell yeah, tell story. their story, yeah. You know, and not so much just tell it from a standpoint of just Google fact because when they right. see somebody pop up on their screen that they know, mm-hmm. that's going to warm their heart that they see, oh, look at such and such, that they still there and they still, you know, doing good or – we pay homage to some of the people that that was lost, whether we may not put up the name, whether it be the person I was interviewing that said some of those names. And, you know, you get to, you get to hear your people and you get to at least show that to somebody in another state where you moved to or wherever it right. is. Now you can show that this is what happened in my life. So that's, that's a huge yeah. part about being a film. Like I get to tell people's story. Yeah. The authentic, the authentic way. Uh, right. Even with pickleball, even with pickleball, you would think it's just sports, but man, that's a that's that it, it has its own world. I could put it yeah. like that without saying too much. Pickleball has its own world, man. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool to kind of like have all these different projects like drop within a year or two span, and it's gonna be like another so point in my life. There. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's gonna be a little, another yeah. part of my life to where I'm like, man, just look at you know, look at what you did again, like, yeah. Yeah. and and appreciate the people that truly believe in you because there are points and times in your career to where you get there. Oh, how your little video thing been going, or are mm-hmm. you still doing your camera thing? And you're like, <laughs> people not yeah. understanding how far I'm trying to go with it, so. Right. I don't and now they know it's Illuminati or nobody. They don't understand. You know, that. everybody yeah. see me. Everybody see me. I swear, I'm a homeboy. Talking about, oh, this is my celebrity partner. Because <laughs> we get to park on the parking lot and not in the regular general admission <laughs> park. <laughs> so tell everybody how they can follow you and keep up with everything you're doing. Man, you can follow me on uh, Instagram mainly, uh, Filminati, F I L M A. N A T I. I have to spell it because a lot of people I've seen some yeah. crazy spelling. Also, uh, I am on Instagram with my personal page, Marco Film Two, um, and my YouTube channel, Film and Audio Productions. You can see all of the work that I've previously mentioned, whether it be music videos, whether it be Coach Prime videos, um, also just influencer videos. I don't know if you even know the guy Charleston White, but I. Ironically, got a chance to, you know, interview him. And that interview also helped my career, you know, with a lot of traction and a lot of people finding out who Filminati was as well. So YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, I'm, you know, LinkedIn as well. And I'm that's true. That's true. And and I and I also one thing I did forget to say, another part, two parts of my appreciation for Coach Prime. I already I had two already. So the other two parts of my appreciation were one, I'm now an accredited camera operator uh, under the I- IMBD, IMDB uh, credit, movie credit uh, website that lets you know who was actually, you know, a part of a project when their name right. pops up. Like people from other crews and production companies can go and search me. So that's one that's a part of my career now that people can actually see I'm not that local guy that you have to say, right. oh, snap, you right. know? <laughs> and two, it still ain't hit me. And it's still just, it's a dream that it even happened, but I'm Emmy nominated. You know, like, right. <laughs> I've never clapped for myself, but. Yeah, Emmy nominated. I, Emmy you know, nominated. And, and it's cool that I didn't win because that's a win within itself. Because like I yeah. said, there are people who have been grinding for 20 years plus 
and haven't even seen the day of the light of their name being on the Emmy nomination. Yeah, yeah. And it just came. It, uh, Best is yet know, to come, man. man. Hey, well, yeah. thank you, man. I appreciate hey, you. I know I you've been so you. busy. I've been I've been staying on your heels. Like we got to get it. We got to hey, get it. It's all good, but I made sure yeah. I was. I made sure I kept that promise because I really, yeah. I'm I'm really grateful and appreciative of people who allowed me to tell my story because a lot of people would just see it and think that there was a lot of handouts along the way yeah. when it was a lot of me adjusting and learning how to become more professional when I was just in a non-professional filming environment with rap music yeah. videos. So sure. sure, I appreciate you. Man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Hey, we'll be in touch. <laughs> yes, sir. You have a great one, man. This has been a great podcast. Um, and just stay blessed, man. I appreciate you. Hey, we'll see you around. My my daughter already said, is he gonna be at the football games this year? <laughs> and now I can tell her you will see Phil Minotti. So come on, come on. Now we'll definitely yeah. be out there. And I gotta get you some cameo. I gotta get you some cameo this year. Yeah, hit, hit, hit me with the camera this time. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. But I appreciate you, man. And you have a great one. All right, man. Peace. All right, peace out, man. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a five-star review. And if you haven't done so, subscribe so you continue to get the updated episode. Until later, peace. Hey, time out with the sports doc. Keep our head right in the game. We ain't never stopping. You are now tuned in. Trust, you don't want to miss. This is where life, sports, and medicine.